Hello and welcome to this video in which we show how to compute the discrete time Fourier series coefficients for a simple periodic discrete time waveform. And uh, this is a fairly simple example in the sense that um, we won't be going through a lot of complex stuff to get the answer. Well, we'll be going through some complex stuff. Uh, but hopefully it will help you make sense of how to actually compute the discrete time Fourier series. So on the screen we have a graph of one period of a discrete time Fourier series. So um, we will assume here that the period of the signal is 8. So at uh, sample 8 it would start over 1, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, and so on. Okay. And our goal is to compute the, um, the Fourier series coefficients, the discrete time Fourier series coefficients, uh, for k going from 1 to 8. So you'll remember, hopefully, that the formula for the discrete time Fourier series co coefficients, the c sub k, is the summation where we sum over one period of x. And so for simplicity, I'll call it n going from 0 to 7, x of n, e to the minus j k n 2 pi over cap n. OK, so in our example here, this cap n is 8. Um, I'm going to keep this in the form 2 pi over 8 uh, just to, I guess, remind us that uh, cap n is 8. And um, then we'll do some simplification right at the end. Okay, now before we uh, launch into this, there's a couple things that probably would be useful to say. One of them is that because n goes from 0 to 7, this is a finite sum. It has 8 terms in it. Each of these terms can be computed on a computer. So one way to find the c sub k's is for each value of k, actually just compute this sum on a computer using MATLAB or um, NumPy or your favorite, um, your favorite computer programming or uh, computation software. I mean, you could, if you were brave enough, even do it in Excel. And so, um, that's actually a fairly viable approach when we're finding discrete time uh, Fourier series coefficients. And in fact, uh, the examples that I'll give, this one we actually can get a fairly nice closed form expression for it um, that provides some information. Uh, the next example uh, uh, on, the su on a subsequent video that I'll do is a periodic square wave. But it turns out that for for many waveforms, it's really kind of hard to get a nice closed form solution. And so you're probably better off just computing the Fourier series uh, coefficients directly. Unless, of course, uh, you're taking a class and uh, you've got a homework problem or you've got to come up with a closed form solution. Okay, so um, what we'll do then is we'll actually write out the terms in the summation that aren't zero. So to do that, uh, let's start with a nice clean workspace. And uh, then we'll go through some manipulation that may seem reasonably, oh, and I forgot something here, which is very important. There needs to be a 1 over n there. Um, OK, that looks much better. OK, so we'll go through some manipulation that at first glance may seem uh, sort of gratuitous and uh, how on earth does one come up with this? And the answer to how one comes up with this is one knows what one wants to achieve at the end and there's about two tricks that one can do to do this. So um, basically I'll show you the trick that gets us a nice closed form solution and then we'll plot the coefficients. If uh, you're not interested in the analysis or the analytical part, you want to jump straight to the interesting bit. Um, about the last minute of the video, we'll show the coefficients plotted and talk about them. OK, so basically what we need is for, uh, as you already recall, x of n is uh, 1 when x is 0 and 2, and minus 1 when x is 4 and 6 
or I'm sorry, when n is 4 and 6, and 0 otherwise. So we can actually write this whole sum out as 1 over n uh, e to the minus j k n, which in this case is 0. This would be x of 0. Uh, that would, x of 0 is 1. Uh, 2 pi over n plus 1 e to the minus j k 2, so this is x of 2, times 2 pi over n minus 1 e to the minus j k 4, 2 pi over n, so this minus 1 is x of 4, minus 1 e to the minus j k 6, 2 pi over n. This minus 1 is x of 6. Okay, and um, it's, uh, uh, again, I could actually just now plug these numbers into uh, some spreadsheet and probably figure out what I need to know. But uh, what I'll do now is show you a trick. Uh, we're going to take these two terms, uh, these exponential terms, and we will factor out of each of them an e to the minus j k times 1 times 2 pi over n. Okay, and the reason we're going to do that is um, some interesting things happen here. Uh, if I do that, uh, so this first term here, uh, this is e to the minus j k 0 2 pi over n, so I can write this as e to the minus j k 1 2 pi over n times e to the j k 1 2 pi over n. So this guy times this guy gives us this exponent up here. Okay, the second term, this guy here, I can write this as e to the minus j k 1 times 2 pi over n times e to the minus j k 1 2 pi over n. And you can see then that this term and this term are the same because I basically factored uh, each of these guys to get this term out. So I can write this as e to the minus j k 2 pi over n. Now I have e to the j k 2 pi over n plus e to the minus j k 2 pi over n. Well, why would I want to do that? I mean, essentially what I've done is I've, I split the difference on the exponents to give me this term, and now I have this. Why, why did I work so hard to get this? Well, um, those of you that are familiar with Euler's formula, and that should be all of you, if you're not, go for, uh, familiarize yourself with it. This term here is 2 cosine 2 pi over n. Okay, so by splitting this difference, factoring this guy out, I now have a 2 cosine 2 pi over n. Okay, and this e to the minus j k 2 pi over n is still here in front of it. So I did all of that work to take these two terms and be able to write them as a single term that has a cosine. Now, we can do a similar thing with these guys here, assuming I can make this big enough to act, oops, oh, we're making a mess. I'll just rewrite this. But the idea is we can do a similar thing with these guys here, and without going through the steps in detail, I can say that e to the minus j uh, times, uh, let's see, where'd that go? Um, e to the jk uh, 4 times 2 pi over n, and these are both minus, minus e to the minus jk 
6, 2 pi over n. Okay, what I'll do out of each of these is factor out an e to the minus j k 5, 2 pi over n. And that will leave me e to the j k 2 pi over n plus e to the minus j k 2 pi over n. And there's a negative sign out here in front of everything. And you'll see immediately, of course, that this is 2 cosine 2 pi over n. And so I've got this uh, exponential term times the same cosine, and I dropped a k in here. 2 cosine k, 2 pi over n. So I've got an exponential term, and I've got the same cosine term. So if I write out then what c sub k is, I have c sub k, and I can factor out my 2 cosine k, 2 pi over n. And now I have e to the minus j k 2 pi over n minus e to the minus j k 5 2 pi over n. Okay? And now I'm going to do the same trick that I did before. I'm going to split the difference on the exponent of these two. And again, without going through any of the details, we're going to end up with an e to the minus j k times, well, uh, yeah, e to the minus j k times 3 2 pi over n times e to the j k 2 pi over n minus e to the minus j k 2 pi over n. Okay, so these two guys here have become this by factoring uh, this term, which essentially splits the difference between the exponents. And you'll immediately, again, using um, Euler's formulas, recognize this as 2 times j sine uh, k 2 pi. And there should be a 2 here and a 2 here. So this is 2 times 2 pi over n. Okay, that looks better. That gives me then, yeah, everything works out better there. Okay, so what I finally end up with then is that c sub k is equal to 2 times, well, here, let me split it up. So we have this 2 times this 2. So we have 4 cosine k 2 pi over n times sine k 4 pi over n. And again, n is 8, so this is going to be pi over 4. This is going to be pi over 2. And we have times, um, let's see, we're running out of space. I hate to do it this way, but we'll do it this way. Times j e to the minus j k 3 2 pi over n. So this guy here that I've written out in this ugly fashion is our answer. That's our c sub k's. And it turns out that if you look at this, since n is 8, this is pi over 2. So whenever k is even, this term is going to be 0. And so if you plot the magnitude and phase of these c sub k's, you get something that looks like this. This is the magnitude, and what it turns out is that basically for k is equal to 1, 3, 5, and 7, uh, the magnitude of every uh, Fourier series coefficient is the same, and the angle of each of the Fourier series coefficient changes signs. Uh, this is uh, pi over, or minus pi over 4, pi over 4, minus pi over 4, and pi over 4. And the even Fourier series coefficients are 0. Now we found that analytically. Again, I could have just computed it by plugging all the numbers into a spreadsheet or a MATLAB or something like that. And I would have had exactly these same numbers. And in fact, I did that just to make sure that I had done the analysis correctly. So uh, the goal here was to provide a example of a discrete time Fourier series, uh, a simple discrete time Fourier series. And uh, it is fairly simple except, of course, that the analysis gets kind of ugly. So thanks for watching.